Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 21st episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled Green with Evil Part 5, alternatively titled Breaking the Spell. Again, we start this episode right where we left off, with the Rangers still stunned that Tommy is a Green Ranger. Sorry, but like, a dude who only wears green shows up, acts like a total dick to everyone. How is this a surprise for literally anyone? Kimberly's more bummed that the bone that she wants to ride is evil. Alpha comforts them by suggesting that Rita put him under an evil spell for this to happen, but I have to wonder where the logic is here. Isn't it also possible that Tommy's just a bit of a dick? Rita and her crew are celebrating the hell out of their victory with beverages and hors d'oeuvres, and Goldar starts brown nosing by telling Rita that it was all because of her that this was so successful. Like, we get it, Goldar. Anyways, Rita says her plan isn't over yet, but before we can learn about the final portion of her plan, we cut back to Alpha losing his complete shit about how Rita is going to win and take everyone prisoner. Jesus, what happened in the little bit of time that we were gone on the moon? Alpha was the one comforting the Rangers before, but now he's like completely the opposite. The Rangers decide to split up and go find Tommy to try to convince him to like not be evil. There's a few layers here. First, it's kind of noble that they're attempting to convince Tommy to be good before they just beat the evil out of him. Second, didn't Alpha say that he was probably under an evil spell? Third, what is going to happen if Trini finds him first? Is he just going to be like, who the hell are you? Kimberly goes to the youth center where people are just watching Goldar's recent attack on the city on the news, and she asks Ernie if he's seen Tommy. Turns out, Tommy is literally right behind her on a machine. I mean, come on. Him, like just look around first. She goes over and she tries to talk to Tommy about how they know that he's the Green Ranger and he basically tells her that he's gonna kill her but Kim pleads with him to just let the other rangers help him. On the moon for some reason Babu and Squat whine to Goldar that they don't want Rita to use the last part of her plan but she ignores them and calls upon the power of the evil Dragon Zord, a Godzilla knockoff who emerges from the sea, eats smokestacks, and wrecks the city. The rangers minus Trini hang out at Billy's garage where Kim tells them all about how her talk with Tommy went. They say such hard-hitting things as, he is so out to get us, and he's under a spell. Trini comes running in panting and yelling about how the Dragon Zord is attacking downtown. Like, bitch, you guys have communicators and can teleport. Do you know how many people probably just died in the time it took for you to run here? Oh well, whatever. It's morphin' time. They arrive in the city, jump on a building rooftop, and they see that the Dragon Zord has the Green Ranger on its head. Green Ranger comes down from his Zord and utilizes his handy dandy dragon dagger to control the giant machine dragon. Alpha gets Zordon back online, and I have to be honest here, I don't remember Zordon leaving again. I think it must have been like somewhere in part 4. He tells Alpha to get the Zords out to help the Rangers, and Alpha has to tell him that like, uh, we definitely wrecked that stuff. Zordon basically says no matter, and somehow the Zords reawaken from the lava crevice. I don't get it, but whatever, it's time to fight. The Dragon Zord and the T-Rex Zord fight for a little bit, and when the Rangers get the upper hand, they bring them together to make the Megazord. Then things get weird, because the Megazord straight up picks up the Dragon Zord by the tail, swings him around, and tosses him into a building. The Rangers tell him to give up, and some random voice actor who's not Tommy says, No way! And it's the most jarring thing ever. Jason goes weird, and decides to challenge Tommy to a fight without the Zords and on the ground, and the Red and Green Rangers do battle. It's pretty intense. The fight is awesome with both of them getting the upper hand momentarily before seesaws back to the other. Really great stuff, but it doesn't matter because Jason knocks Tommy away from the Sword of Darkness and he fires it with his Blade Blaster, disintegrating the damn thing. Remember when Finster said that it couldn't be destroyed? The Rangers show up and demorph, and they start celebrating that the spell is broken, but like, I have no idea where they got that idea. What if Tommy just got up and slit all their collective throats anyways? The Rangers remorph together as all six, and they do crazy poses while talking about friendship and stuff. Stuff. Then Zoran lets the rangers know, via Tommy's dagger, that the Dragon Zord, Sabertooth Tiger Zord, Triceratops Zord, and the Mastodon Zord can all come together to form the Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Rita is bummed about this turn of events, but like, not nearly as bummed as she probably should be. I mean, she just lost the biggest winner that she's ever had, and she's just kind of like, well, shit happens. At the command center, Tommy takes Zordon's oath to never be a cool guy again, and the rangers give him his own communicator. In a sweet ass 90s moment, they put their hands together and hop into the air, freeze framing into oblivion. Hell yeah, Power Rangers. Was this the perfect end to this story? Hell no. Could it have been worse? Yeah. It's nice to see the Dragon Zord, but it's kind of a cock tease that it doesn't show up until the fifth episode. I feel like Tommy should have had more emotional issues about joining the people that he just tried to kill, be like a little messed up from being put under a mind control spell, but okay, whatever. The action is good, and I think the idea behind it was all solid. So there you go, now we have six Power Rangers. How will things change? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.